This video is about planting the main bed of my garden here. Got off to a real late start because of all that cold weather we had and everything, but you can see I pretty much got the uh, garden all tilled up and ready to go. And I'm just going to start by putting a couple st posts in, uh, just temporary posts in, just to um, allow me to tie some strings to get some nice straight rows while I'm planting. Uh, try to measure them out just to kind of keep them um, in straight lines and you know keep everything nice and even looking so it takes a little time to to get it set up and you can see last year I actually had all my tomatoes right across the top of the garden with the rows running the other way and this year um, basically moving the tomatoes as far away as I can from that because if you remember last year I had the blight and it wiped out all my tomato plants so I'm gonna take this top half of the garden here and move pretty much all the um, the oddball stuff up here and uh, there you can see I've got this little piece of plywood I cut years ago to hold my garden string on and that's a real handy little thing to to um, to make it takes a couple of minutes to cut something like that out on a jigsaw and um, you get to use the same string over and over again every year and it's really easy to wind up and doesn't get all knotted and stuff so you know that's something that I'd recommend you know taking a couple minutes and making if you have a garden it, it doesn't have to look like that it could be anything but um, it really does help so I try to get all my my uh, rows planted in pretty much as straight a line as I can so I uh, stretch the string and then you know just kind of have a pointed hoe that I go down and every year I plant these strike beans and I save seeds from the year before I find they're kind of our best uh, bet for when we, we like to make the dilly beans and we also like to can the beans and um, these are a very productive bean for that so I plant that you know that over and over every year and there I am kind of closing it in and someday I want to get one of those uh, little planter things that you just pour the seeds in and walk down the row and it automatically opens a furrow drops a seed in at the spacing according to the plate that you have in it and then uh, covers it and packs it down but for right now I'm still using the hoe so at the end of every row that I plant I always put a marigold in is basically the only defense that I use against bugs and kind of these things can get really stinky once they get bigger and they get a lot of flowers on them but they do seem to deter the bugs and then when I put the seeds in I like to try to soak everything down good just to get them started now we've had such hot sunny weather dry weather lately that um the seeds have been germinating in like about three days so that's pretty amazing so I got that first row done with the beans and now I'm gonna do the uh, Jackson Wonder lima beans and these are a brown lima bean that we plant every year and we really enjoy them they have great flavor um, they're a little bit shorter quicker to grow bean than um, some of the forward hook ones and stuff that we used to plant and um, we have good luck with them every year so we you know we kind of plant them over and over and just save some seeds so pretty much same thing you can see just put the seeds in uh, cover and pat them down and then uh, I'm gonna stick another marigold at the end of the row and you can see how good those uh, styrofoam cups work out for starting your plants and they plants just pop right out of them so then I'm gonna just you know wet these down a little bit to get them going and then I like to, when I get done with the row, take the rototiller out and uh, just run up and down and anywhere that I've walked or packed it down, I like to loosen it up. It actually um, seems to help moisture, you know, get absorbed into it and stuff and helps to slow down the weed growth too in that area. So this old Troy built just kind of putts along you know a little bit over idling it just goes up and down the aisle up and down the rows and uh, just a uh, a good work an old machine that's uh, really um, been a great help for the garden 
uh, just putting some stakes in to measure, allow me to measure out the spacing on the hills. Um, I think the row spacing they call for, these are uh, zucchini squash and yellow squash plants I'm putting in this row. And the spacing calls for a six foot spacing on the row and then it calls for a four foot between the hills. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just kind of putting a stick in the ground at those locations um, so I have a good idea where to plant everything. And then I'm just going to go back and put a couple couple seeds around each stick and call that a hill. I have to tell you, I got that funky looking sun hat that I've been wearing on. And um, that thing is just amazing. Uh, my doctor switched my uh, blood pressure meds. And uh, the new ones, if I'm out in the sun without that hat on, after about 20 minutes, I'll just about pass out and... Um, with the hat on, I can actually go a couple hours in the sun, so um, it really does make a big difference. So, um, really, it's a you know a worthwhile item if you're going to be out in the garden and spend some hours out there. And there goes another marigold in the end of that, and then basically same thing over and over again. Just get the old Troy built fired up, and now I'm moving the the rows apart now these are eight foot spacing on these rows and then um it calls for six foot spacing on the plants and this corner of the garden here is basically going to be all my squash and there you can see the butternuts that's like our staple squash um we love to have a root cellar full of them in the fall because they actually will last through until uh, usually Easter they'll make it you know the last ones that are left around Easter time we wind up you know having they get soft a little bit but um, they do they are the longest lasting thing in the root cellar and we do enjoy them so you know same thing plant the hills and um, then at the end of the row I'm gonna put a marigold just to hopefully help keep bugs out and I've had really good luck with them so but those squash bugs are really hard to control once they get going um and then the next row I'm gonna try an orange butternut something new from Baker Creek this year and that's another eight foot spacing you can see I I tilled between the rows there and then um, put the sticks in again and eight foot row spacing and then uh, six foot plant spacing I think it was that it called for and it's been great this year. Once it actually did warm up enough to get outside and get going and the snow stopped and everything, um, we've had basically nothing but sunny days, so uh, very little rain. And, um, so that's been a real good thing to help get all the seeds started. The, the ground is extremely warm for this time of the year up here and stuff, so that helps, really helps the germination a lot. And, you know, you can see that tiller does get a good workout, and it does do a good job. The uh, tines I bought for it on Amazon last year were really good. And now this row here is going to be the Long Island Cheese Pumpkins. Um, we tried them last year for the first time, and they really do uh, have an amazing flavor when you make pumpkin pies out of them. So I'm going to mix up this row with... Um, mostly Long Island cheese pumpkins and then I'm also going to plant some of the uh, small pie sugar pie pumpkins at the other end and I'm going to sneak a couple more hills in over by the rhubarb there. You can pretty much see the planting of this part of the garden here does go really quick and just going to show you these are the grape plants um, when I started planting here the leaves are actually starting to come out on them now and um, they're doing good and you know there's that string winder again and that makes it real easy to wind the string back up when you're done with it for the day and put it away and pretty much there's the whole top of the garden planted a couple hours later all planted watered and you know just ready to let the sun make it germinate so now it's time to um, start down on the area for the tomato plants I decided to move them you know down to the bottom of the garden here far away from where the other ones were last year and I'm starting to get that tilled up now and get ready to set my rows for that so the um i'm reusing the stakes over again and i did wipe them wash them down a little bit with some clorox water uh so you just to hopefully make sure that 
we don't get um, that blight back. I just took about 10% of Clorox and the rest water and just kind of brushed them down with that. So hopefully that'll help. And um, you can see that steak pounder that I made last year. That still works good. Um, and, you know, as always, I get out that long, narrow spade that I have uh, and try to dig a hole as deep as I can for each of the plants. So I try to get down, I think that's uh, 14, 15 inches long, maybe 16, I don't know. But I try to get that down as far as I can and at least, you know, bury the shovel so the plants will have a good start. Now this year the uh, plants have been, uh, they're going in late, a couple weeks late, and they've been sitting on our porch without a lot of sun, so... You can see those last couple of weeks uh, where I had them out, they um, didn't get enough sun and they got kind of really tall and uh, spindly on them. But that doesn't really matter. I just bury them as deep as I can and um, they'll fatten up real quick, uh, you know, once they get a little bit of sunshine on them. So again, those uh, styrofoam cups make it really easy. Uh, you can see there's no real root binding or anything, even with a plant that size. Um, just have to break break the root ball up a little bit with your fingers but um basically there's very little shock when you're you're dealing with those styrofoam cups so you want to i try to plant these uh pretty much as deep as i can but you can see that um some of them are real tall and spindly and uh stick up a lot but they'll pick up over you know the next couple of days so these are all the Amish paste tomatoes going in first. And um, then I'm going to put another row. Uh, I think they're the Paul Robus and the dark tomatoes next. Um, same thing, pound the steaks in. Um, and you, if you notice, I also am spacing the tomato plants out a little bit further than I did last year. Um, I got them spaced on five foot centers this year. And uh, I'm actually staggering them. Hopefully, to, so if anything starts to spread, the wind won't spread it as easy. So, um, we'll see. You know, time will tell what's going to happen. But hopefully, it looks like it's going to be a good dry year like it has been so far. So, um, hopefully, blight won't be a problem again. But each row of tomatoes, the same thing. Just uh, pound, like, pound the stakes in and then go back and just dig the holes. And also, if you remember, I did put another 16 plants over in the um, the raised bed area there. To, you know, I have some plants that are even further away in case something starts spreading, just to be on the, you know, the safe side. So, I'll find out. Um, the same thing, just bury the tomatoes as far as you can. Uh, it helps uh, helps when you get a dry season to uh, have the roots, you know, real da deep down in the ground. Um, so you, uh, you know, you bury them good and then you just have to make sure that you water them thoroughly too. And, uh, you know, some of the taller ones have to be tied up because we do get some pretty good winds up here that'll snap them off when you first put them in if you don't get them all, you know, tied up so that the, the wind can't break them. And then I'll just, uh, I like to just take a watering can and just go over, to, just go back and forth over and put some water on and then go back and forth maybe, you know, three or four times just to try to get it to, to go fairly deep down in the ground. Um, you know, if you just go over it once, you get water or you get the water, it'll go down maybe a half inch in the soil. So you want to just keep going back and forth over it until you get them good. And the same thing here, just uh, trying to sneak the teller in over the areas that I walked on and you know fluff everything up again and so that that's just uh, takes a couple minutes you see I got another row in there third row now and then I've got this one area left that I'm gonna try to squeeze the rest of the plants in and there goes another row back there And then, you know, I got this, this one corner here that um, 
kind of left and what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm actually going to put the plants a little closer over in this corner. They're just a um, a small Roma type plant that I'm trying this year so I'm going to squeeze them, the rest of them in uh, the corner over here. And there you can see the tiller is not really uh, user friendly when it comes to a real tight spot like that. Uh, trying to turn it around and stuff. You kind of have to hold that one handle up and get it to back up and the tines turn and everything so you have to be careful but it's doable but it just doesn't like you know real tight spots but it, it does do a wonderful job and so you can see this whole big garden here basically is all just uh, the squash and melons and um, tomato plants and everything else is inside the raised bed area or up by the house so same thing over and over again just gonna dig some more holes after I get the stakes in and luckily those uh, ash stakes that I made last year they're um, they're holding up real good there's really no sign of rotting on them or anything so I think I'll get a couple more years at them before I have to slice up another tree so that's a good thing so I got those holes dug and now I'm just gonna try to dig down as deep as I can and just bury the plants and here you can see I'm putting these a, a little bit closer but um, I think they're gonna be a small bushy plant from what I understand so um, I'll just keep an eye on them try to trim them up a little bit but I'll let nature take its course yeah, this year I think I cut back to about 76 plants and i um, glad I did because uh, I really didn't have room for many more. You see how they're packed in there. And now I'm going to sneak a couple more there and then um, I'll be putting one last row there in front of the garden. And um, there you can see the compost pile and I'm starting to get some of the uh, the mulch spread around a little bit too. Some of the first stuff that I picked up with the cyclone rake. And there's the old compost pile. That's from last two years and that one there will be spread in the garden next year and ground in. Should be all ready to go. So I'm just uh, putting in these last tomatoes and these are um, it's supposed to be a small striped green tomato, I think, a uh, couple of the plants. And the other ones are supposed to be a small striped uh, black tomato. So we'll find out. So now you can see I got that uh, cyclone rake out again. And I'm getting as many uh, bins as I can full. Um, it takes probably about 30 of the, uh, at least 30 of the cyclone rake bins full to mulch the garden. And um, I've been doing an awful lot of watering because we just have not had rain over the last several weeks. So uh, every night I probably fill the water. And I like using the water and can better than the hose. And every night I probably fill the can 30, 40 times to, you know, water everything in the raised bed area and out here. So there you can see I'm starting to get the stuff mulched in. Um, the mulching takes about the longest of anything. And here's my wife's uh, Japanese peony tree. Um, the thing is in full bloom now and it's just gorgeous. And she's got some irises going there too at the same time. And uh, her Japanese maple that we planted was just a little twig when we bought it. And you can see pretty much um, I've been keeping the grass real short with a cyclone rake trying to pick up all the mulch that I can for the garden. And the bees are out there just uh, spinning away, enjoying themselves in the wind. Um, this one section of the, the yard over on the side there, I did let it grow a little bit taller. Um, I let it go the extra couple days, hopefully to get a little bit more mulch for the garden out of it. Um, I just, uh, this time of the year, you, you just can't mow the grass enough. You really do need a lot of mulch. And, um, Hopefully another, maybe another week or so, I, I should have everything all mulched in. 
but this cyclone rake you can see it uh, does a wonderful job it makes a yard look just like a golf course when you're done just uh, everything comes out perfect and it's really you don't even know it's behind the tractor when you're on a flat area like that it just wings right around and you know it's easy to, to just back up anywhere you want to dump it and I've got different areas around the garden right now where I'm dumping it so um, you know that makes it real easy when I think back to how I used to get the grass clippings I used to have to uh, mow the lawn first and then I had one of those little ground dri driven uh, lawn sweeper things that I would pull behind the tractor to pick it up and then that thing you know you'd have to go over and dump it but um, it would hold maybe not even a fifth of what the cyclone rake bucket does so you're like constantly back and forth and you know you had to mow and let it dry out and then go back the next day and uh, rake it up so this thing's really been a, a great time saver and it's been working real good lately and you see it's a really easy you just uh, back it up um, un unzip some of that velcro there's a couple little clips here you have to open and um, just pick up the front of it and then uh, drive away and uh, everything comes right out of it and then I just get to work with the, uh, the wheelbarrow and the shovel and I try to get it down about six inches thick at least if I can and um, that seems to hold it for the season and uh, keep the weeds from growing and um, then at the end of the year I'll just push all that mulch up in a pile and let it compost and grind it in the garden the next year spread it again so here you can see slowly but surely um getting it out and there's my horseradish i put one little root in a couple of years ago so this summer i'm going to be digging a bunch of it up and we'll be doing some processing videos uh trying to grind it up and can it and here you can see this is just a couple of days later after um i took that first video and you can see the grapes have uh just uh started to form the little little grapes on them and the leaves are um really getting larger by the day now so the um you know the mulch is what really takes most of the time for the garden it's just a matter of just uh wheelbarrowing it and dumping it where you need it and spreading it out and um you can see my grass keeps getting shorter and shorter i really can't put the mower any shorter i'm trying to grab every last bit i can out of it but um I gotta wait now for the grass to grow a little bit more before I can uh, finish up and um, actually it's dry in the bottom of my hill down by the pond now so I'm gonna be able to get a little bit more out but if you look at this video you can just see a uh, blue heron flying away I saw it down there eating a fish it grabbed out of the pond and by the time I got back with a camera it was uh, it saw me and took off so I just barely caught a flash of it and with the cyclone rake about the only thing that you really have to do is clean this screen every once in a while um, originally it came with a bag that had a real small screen and would plug up at no time you know like one trip around the yard but this one you can go all day and at the end of the day you have to clean it and here you can see I'm getting closer to the end I just need uh, maybe about another six or eight bags full but that's gonna have to wait another couple days till it grows you can see how fast those beans have germinated and the um the uh lima beans have you know popped up and they're doing really good and everything's starting to look real healthy so you can see this year's garden is all in now i just have some a little bit of mulching to do to to finish it up and um you know then it'll be just a matter of keeping it watered and uh, taking care of the tomatoes and our spinach is uh, still doing good um you can see the cilantro up by the house there is coming in good and the kale and stuff and uh, swiss chard the radishes and bok choy all went to seed from the heat they just drove it up to seed and the um the lettuce we've been eating salads like all every day and uh, we just can't eat it all that little batch there just keeps uh, growing like crazy and I didn't plant sunflowers this year, but you can see there's some of them coming back up. And I threw a couple old potatoes around the compost bin, and they seem to be doing pretty good. And I've been doing a lot of watering this year just because of the dryness. But, um, you know, it's better than being too wet, I think. 
and everything's really off to a good start. It's just amazing how fast everything is growing with all the sunshine we've had this year. And here's all the raised bed area. Um, that went in about two weeks ago, and uh, pretty much everything is really doing great in there also. Um, you can see the basil pretty soon. We'll be able to start thinning that out and using some of the first basil of the year there. And carrots, same thing. Uh, we'll be thinning thinning them out in a little while once we start seeing some baby carrots. And peppers are all doing really wonderful. They love this sunshine. And uh, eggplants are starting to really take off now, too. They were little tiny plants when they went in. Um, and the potatoes are just, they've gone crazy also. The sunshine is just amazing what it's doing. And there are some beets that have to be thinned pretty soon. And then there's the uh, shallots. They're off to a good start now also. So you can also see everything in the boxes is you know it's germinated now and it's really starting to take off and do good and uh there's some bunch of onions they come back every year but they're real pretty when they go to seed and uh we have our first tomato flowers also on the uh, plants that are in there so hopefully shortly we'll have some tomatoes so even with a late start i think everything is going to catch up really quick this year and um you know, the lettuce really is, uh, it's been holding in there good for all the heat. I just can't believe it. And um, I'm getting so tired of eating spinach for about a month now. We've had spinach every day, spinach salads and cooked spinach and everything else. So we've been really enjoying that. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.